Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. In today's video, I want to walk you through how I built my sister's site, Nautilus Designs, which I use for B2B for my client work and web development and design. I want to take you through how I rebuilt my website in Gatsby JS. I have been a little obsessed with the Google PageSpeed Insights. It actually tells you how fast or slow your site is. And I really wanted to make sure my site was as fast as possible, and I did that. I hit a 100 out of 100 on the Google PageSpeed Insights for desktop, and I hit a 92 because I've got some really big images when it comes to the mobile site, but everything is in the green. But every single one of my pages always hits the green mark in the PageSpeed Insights. And that's in part because Gatsby says, fast in every way that matters. And I put it to the test by building a portfolio website with heavy images. And let's go through that right now. All right, welcome back. So to start, I wanna focus on the first page of my website, the index or homepage. For me, I love having large images and a lot of my clients are in the South Pacific. So for me, I added this picture of palm trees. As you can see a lot of videos, we have pictures of palm trees going on across the board. Always love my play on words. We make it all, quote, a tropical breeze. So this picture is actually leveraging the Gatsby background image. Speaking of big pictures, let's head back to my code. That if we go back up to the top right here, I use the background image from Gatsby. Now the background image works just like the Gatsby image, but the great part about it is that I actually can put content inside of it. So I leveraged the header tag along with the black overlay. Now what the black overlay does, if we head over to my global CSS. Now I mentioned before that I did take my content from WordPress and bring it into Gatsby. The pictures I had before were from WordPress, however, they already had an overlay on it. So it doesn't really work exactly the best way yet. What I wanna do in my next version, I wanna go back and actually re-bring all these pictures in and then leverage the black overlay. The black overlay is using the RGBA color palette. And what I do is I can change my overlay from zero to 0.5%. Now this already has a black overlay. Let's head over to localhost. And notice now that this has a black overlay on top of the picture. What I eventually wanna do is I wanna go back, take the pictures out, replace them with non-black overlay images, from Photoshop and let the code do the work. This is a holdover from WordPress, but I actually built in a black overlay inside of the Gatsby background image. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to change all of the different backgrounds at the same time. That's the power of the CSS running the Gatsby background overlay when it comes to the text on the homepage and subsequent pages as well. And just so I don't actually save it, I'm gonna go back to zero. And there we go, now we're back to this design. What I also did in my design was this logo in the top left area. I'm one about speed, as we saw before, with guarding the Google PageSpeed Insights, but I'm also about quality. And to me, there's no better image than an SVG file built properly. That's because the SVG file is not a pixel-based picture. It's a vector-based image. It's one of the only file formats you can use on the web that's vector-based. So if we were to go into Illustrator, which I'm not in right now, we could also see that my SVG file is a whopping 9K. That's it. That's all this picture is. And there really is no pixels. This is the blue one. And I also have the white one, which of course you can't see because it's white on white but there really are no pixels. And what you get is you get this beautifully rich image and especially for retina screens because now we're not just on 2X screens, we're on 3X screens. The iPhone X is now 3X, which means they crammed three times the amount of pixels into the logo. That's a lot. However, with an SVG file, it looks crystal clear because in theory, there are no pixels in the SVG file. So if you're redesigning your site, think about using SVG files for as much as you can. In this case, I used my logo 
in this instance right here. Also, my entire design is based upon React Bootstrap. So I use React Bootstrap, which is one of my favorite tools. If we go up here, we imported the React Bootstrap. Bootstrap has been around for a while. Until I discovered the React Bootstrap, it was like, oh my gosh, what have I been missing? The reason for that is it makes coding so much easier. Instead of typing div container div row, I can just say container row and call. And based upon the 12 columns, I have a seven five column here. And then I also can reverse my columns using just a class name from, as they call it, the vanilla version of Bootstrap. And so I just use it this way and using that container within Bootstrap, everything automatically just goes right to a one column. Let me turn this one and go that way. There we go. So what happens is, is that everything goes right to a one column, right from using the container within React Bootstrap, which is the same, of course, as Bootstrap. So I know everything just flows and leverages it really easily and successfully. So again, I use the logo in the top left and still SVG file, use Bootstrap to create the navigation as it moves up and down, and I use the Gatsby background image inside of that home page. If I head to the portfolio, notice how fast all those pictures just popped up. And if we go back to the Google Page Insights, it's actually Google Page Speed Insights, this page, if we run a quick little test on this guy, again, the mobile always goes a little slower. It's always gonna yell at me that I haven't loaded the pictures up, or the pictures, the text up first, because they are running off of Adobe fonts. I did bring them in. I think Adobe has a great collection. And if you have the Adobe Creative Cloud, you're all set to go. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, you can't run localhost. Uh, that's that's funny, I must say. Uh, that's a, I've never tried that before. That's a really good one there. Uh, localhost is your local server, which means it's not gonna work. Uh, that's funny. Uh, things I don't notice when I copy and paste, and I've done this video about two times because the first time I did it, while we're talking, the internet died and literally <laughs> had to stop the video halfway through. There we go. Desktop portfolio, a pure 100. Now keep in mind that these pictures are not small. I have a separate folder. Where is it? In my static folder for all of the images that are on this page right here. And I have big PNG files. I purposely wanted PNGs, and this gets in a little more design. I didn't want a pure white. I kind of wanted to go a little sandy as a beach look for that tropical image approach. And so these pictures are actually transparent PNGs. And so what happens is, like with the Golden Isles Arts website, this picture is transparent and it's 469 kilobytes. The Kona Marlin fishing site is 1.3. Wavecrest is 1.4. Work the Wick 1.6. I have some big files. Howard Wire Cloth 2.3. I have big files, and yet I was able to still accomplish a perfect 100 out of 100. This is the power of Gatsby Image. And you've probably watched a few videos or two before from me talking about how powerful it is. And this whole line, speedy optimized images without the work. If we take a look at it, let's go into portfolio here. So all my pictures are just pulling off of basically a Gatsby image that I'm pulling out of. I also have the alt. I've got a class name for that because I'm using the cards in React Bootstrap for the pictures, and I have them lazy load in. That was really important to bring the fade in into the design so they loaded in as needed along the page. But this page is, oh, I don't even know how big the file size is. I mean, all these pictures plus more is 18.8 megs, and it loaded almost instantly. That is radical. So for the portfolio, I accomplished this page by leveraging the Gatsby image across all pictures. 
And what I also did with this page, if you can see here, I use the edges map, which is, a t I was gonna say a tool, uh, but it's a coding technique to have it repeat over and over again the content you wanna display. Well, what is the content I wanna display are located, see if I can show it down here. Well, what I was using essentially was a bunch of what are called markdown files. And markdown files are just bits of information I can pull from. So how the portfolio section was really built was within Gatsby, if we go back up to content, what I have are just markdown files. I have worked the WIC, Wavecrest, Calamara Fishing. We have the Kaufman Development Group. And all of these, if we just open them up, and I'm gonna come over here to, let's go to work the WIC, that I have what's front matter up top and text below. So I've got title, work the WIC. Also, I have an image one alt. I've yet to actually make them different. I thought in my head that I was going to have different type for this, but to be honest, I just got lazy. And I said, you know what, they're the same, I just copied and pasted. I also included the location and the software and the URL. Those appear on the individual portfolio pages. So if I head over here and I actually go down to, we'll just use work the wick. Work the wick comes in, large picture loads rapid fire. And because I was not using a white background, I wanted a little bit of the sand tan background to kind of fit with this blue, kind of a blue orange kind of combination. This picture loaded rapid fire with Gatsby image. And then I have location built with and view website right here. What I also did, and I haven't finished this yet because I have to go back and do this, but if we head to the Golden Isles Arts and Humanities piece, notice how there's text below right here. So if I go back to the Golden Isles Arts and Humanities, the text appears below about Golden Isles Arts and Humanities. I wrote also specific code. If I go to, let's find it again. Close up my content, come into the source folder, and then portfolio item I'm looking for. What I did was I wrote an if then statement and I said basically, once I find it in here, uh, where'd it go? Here it is. I said, basically, if there is any HTML below the front matter, then show the article. And I use the article tags. It's pretty much an article. And if not, just don't show anything. Do one of the two. Because not always is everything gonna have an explanation. Some might just have the picture and explain what the project is. So eventually I was gonna go back and write more content about the actual website, but I didn't get to it yet. And so the projects I haven't actually written the information for are not gonna show below. And that's also why I used markdown files. I can have an if then statement below. This is all required up top, but this for me was optional. And I leveraged the power of the markdown files in which to build the individual pages. Now the other good thing about the markdown files is it makes for adding pages so bleeping easy. I can't put explicit because I'd have to change my YouTube formulation, but I wanted a way to make an easy way to update my website. That's the power of WordPress really well is that it just makes things easy. And I said, well, I can duplicate, I can copy pages. And I said, well, what if I just duplicate the markdown file? So if I stop this, oh, hello Gatsby, you need to update yourself. I will do that in a little bit. So if I wanted to create a secondary or a new piece, I'm gonna duplicate work the wick. And we'll say work the wick two in this case. All I really have to do is say work the wick two, add a new image. I'll put work the wick two for the alt and I'll keep it for right now the same. And if I save this, when I restart my server, it's gonna make the thumbnail in this case for work the wick two in this case right here and add it to my list because I'm using the map regarding the different markdown files it's going to take all of the markdown files run a query build the thumbnails and we're not going to be on the server we're going to be on localhost server give it a second or two longer 
And what's going to happen is it's going to rebuild this. There it goes. Refresh. And now I have worked the WIC too. And so I wanted a way that I could easily update the site as newer and newer clients came in without having to do a lot of work. Because it's like the cobbler with no shoes effect. When you work on other people's websites all day, the last thing you want to touch is your site. It's like having a chef who just orders out because he's just tired of cooking. It happens out there. So I wanted a system that made it easy. But I took it one step further. If we read my iTerm over here, what it also says is there's also a Netlify CMS component running at localhost admin. So what I also did was if we go to Netlify for CMS, so there actually is not just a Netlify, but there's a netlifycms.org and there's an open source content management for your Git workflow. So what I did was I implemented Netlify CSS, CSS, Netlify CMS. So what I can do is on my site, I can type Nautilus Designs admin and log in. And just like that, I have my portfolio still as a CMS. So if I want to go this route, and if we don't, there's no work the wick too because I haven't re-uploaded it. But I can say new portfolio, and this is also what I have to do as well. Notice that all the fields haven't been finished yet. Because I added the other fields afterwards, I have to go back into my admin.yml file and add the actual location and the software, and I don't think I added the URL yet. Nope, it's just title, image one, alt info, and body. So it operates a lot like WordPress and the fact I can go on a CMS and actually use the content management system, or I can just duplicate the markdown file. Whichever way works, I just wanted a fast way to easily update my website. And I got that with both Netlify CMS and markdown files. And before I forget, I am gonna toss that file. So let me actually go back, stop my server. Let me go take out work the wick too and Gatsby develop. And what I also did on the contact page while leveraging Netlify, which was already a really great tool with Netlify CMS, but if we head to the contact page, I also built my form using Netlify forms. So Netlify also has a forms function that you can use and it's really easy. I was really surprised that all you really have to add is Netlify true to your form to get it working. Now there are some more pieces in here you should follow. There's a honey pot, you have to name it properly. But to use a form, it's really, really easy. And two things that while Netlify or what WordPress was great about was the portfolio section and the forms, Netlify took care of it. So for me, everything was already self-contained within Gatsby enough to run all these components inside of my website. And so my form is just leveraging both the React Bootstrap, if we go to the source and to the pages and the contact, all I have is a form and the form is leveraging React Bootstrap. So I do leverage the power of both Gatsby, Netlify, and React Bootstrap to create a really simplistic, well, I guess it's not the right word, but a very fluid system. For me, I really wanted it a way to make it where it's effective because to me, forms are about the end user. I want them to use it more than me because I don't touch this. I want it really easy to fill out this form and contact me if they wanna work with me in this case. And so everything was about the user. I thought about how fast can I make this site run and how easy is it for someone to look at my portfolio and to contact me. And every page, there's the power of Gatsby image. Notice how it took a little bit longer to load up. These are not small pictures. And if we run a quick inspect, everything is mobile friendly. It scrolls down the page. There's my little cool little picture. And it's all working. And that is how I built my website with Netlify and React Bootstrap through Gatsby.